All right, on this chill note, I think we can start. Um, welcome to this week Autonomy Talks. Uh, this week is a pleasure to have Marco Bielonic, uh, who is a doctoral student in uh, Robotic Systems Lab, working with Professor Marco Utter, Professor Stylian Koros, and Professor Sang Bei Kim from MIT. Uh, I, I think it's fair uh, to say that you are a doctoral student and not yet a doctor, but I, I have understood that you are about to finish, right? So. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you already got the, the PhD. Well, I successfully um, finished my defense, but I'm not yet allowed to call myself okay. doctor. <laughs> okay, that, yeah, that, then I was I was conservative enough. Thank you. Yeah, so something about Marco. Marco, uh, bef before starting his PhD, he received a bachelor's and master's degree in mechanical engineering from TU Darmstadt in Germany. And uh, notably during uh, his studies, he spent some time uh, in other institutions, among those uh, in the cybernetics department in Trondheim in Norway. Uh, he worked also for Mercedes-Benz in, uh, in Affalterbach uh, and, uh, and many other places which you, you find in his bio. Uh, he focuses his, his PhD studies on uh, optimization-based methods to, to do motion control and planning for wheeled legged robots. So I guess today we will see a lot of very cool videos of these robots and and these robots have to uh, have the challenge of going on on very difficult uh, and uh, uneven terrains so uh today he's going to talk about uh his recent work and i guess this these next steps that he wants to to do and uh, we are very excited to hear what you what you're going to talk about marco so go ahead the stage is yours yeah, thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you also for inviting me to the autonomy talks. I think you invited some great speakers here and I'm proud to be part of it. So it's a pleasure also for me to present my work of the last four years. And in the next 40 minutes, I'm talking about uh, weed legged robots and their hybrid locomotion skills. But let me first present to you why they will become more and more important. Most people live nowadays in urban environments. We can easily foresee that this share will increase even more in the future, requiring smart solutions to make life in cities more livable. In particular, the last mile challenge requires novel ideas that can assist our society with this growing demand. Our fuel powered vehicles account for 41% of all CO2 emissions, a higher share than in any other Western countries. Even electrifying this, um, this fleet of vehicles cannot solve the problem of increasing traffic congestion and the growing demand for faster delivery. A study by the World Economic Forum forecasts a significant rise in delivery vehicles and therefore emissions in cities by 2030. For the last mile delivery problem, we believe the shift from human piloted and fuel powered vehicles to electric small scale autonomous machines would be a global solution. We have seen a rise of quadrupedal robots with similar morphology in the last few years by many different companies and labs. There are some hu humanoid robots that can add diversity in terms of the amount of legs. If we look more closely at the deliver last mile delivery problem, a robotic platform operating in cities requires three unique properties. A large part of urban environments consists of flat and open terrains that require speed and efficiency which cannot be achieved with these traditional legged system. At the same time, we see a rise of novel six wheel delivery robots from Starship, Amazon and FedEx. Urban environments, however, comprise obstacles that their wheel platforms cannot overcome. As an alternative solution, Alphabet's company Wing deploys autonomous lightweight delivery drones to reduce delivery times and greenhouse gas emissions. Wing's payload, however, is only limited to 1.4 kilograms. To achieve speed, versatility, and payload capabilities, we need a multimodal robotic solution that allows for individual material transport everywhere. The wheel is one of humankind's greatest inventions that nature could not mimic. Together with humans' unique mobility, the wheel has enabled us to improve the way we live by making our means of transport more efficient and fast. To this end, we have changed our environments drastically in the last centuries from terrestrial terrains to relatively flat and open terrains. In these environments, we managed to outperform nature by adding wheeled transportation systems into our daily commute. This inspired the development of these wheeled legged robots achieving the best of both worlds. 
The first version of handles showed impressive motions and the latest version targets logistic applications. Throughout the time of this dissertation, there has been an active progress in this field. These robots do not have a trade-off between mobility and efficiency, which results in fast, efficient, and versatile locomotion. Hybrid motions where the robots walks and drives at the same time achieves even agile motions over obstacles. We foresee that this will be the next generation of robotic mobility that does not stop on the road. The caveat, however, is that it adds additional complexity through the wheels. I would like to bring this work a little bit into perspective by highlighting the state of the art in 20, 2017 when we started working on this project. In the related work, there have been no projects addressing agile wheel legged locomotion, and research has generally targeted wheel on leg robots where the legs act as a suspension system. In 2015, South Korea's Dear C Hubo robot won the DARPA Robotics Challenge because it was fast and adaptable by switching between driving and walking modes. In 2017, Boston Dynamics showcased with handle agile motions where the robot jumps and drives at the same time. Meanwhile, we were working on this monstrous six-wheeled robot with 36 actuators. During this development, we changed our direction by adding wheels to our existing quadruped animal. This was probably one of the most critical decisions throughout this study. In 2017, we showcased skating motions with passive wheels, and throughout this presentation, you will experience how much the robot's capabilities improved compared to its very first version. One of the interesting aspects when controlling skating motions is that legs cannot produce any ground reaction forces along the rolling direction. And due to the robot's kinematics, we add a clause with which the robot can generate forces to propel itself. Our lab released four generations of, our, of the roller walking animal over the last four years. As shown in the previous video, the first version showed for the first time skating motions with passive wheels. In 2018, we switched to powered wheels with a maximum torque of four Newton meters. The key difference between a human on passive wheels and a robot equipped with actuated wheels is that the robot can exert control over its wheels that human cannot match. We quickly noticed that the wheel's torque was not enough and we upgraded to a pseudo drive drive with 28 Newton meters in 2019 and the wheel hub design in 2020. If we look more closely at our final version with actuated wheels, then we can identify 16 actuated degrees of freedom, where four of them are part of the non-steerable wheels. Due to this design, the robot needs to execute hybrid locomotion in order to turn and, and pure driving motions are only possible along the robot's forward and backward direction. The weed legged robot also requires a, stat, a state estimation of the robot's pose that considers moving ground context. To deal with uncertainties of the terrain and state estimates, we torque control all actuators. But how can we generate the torque commands for all of these actuators? By applying a whole body controller that considers the full rigid body dynamics and tasks such as inequality constraints that respect the friction cone and torque limits, and the rolling constraints that basically states that acceleration at the contact point equals the centripetal acceleration. We can track contact forces and other whole body trajectories. Finally, the feed forward torque is computed with the full rigid body dynamics and with some low gain position and velocity tracking, we can account for modeling errors. With this approach, we can adapt to unforeseen conditions as shown here where the robot with actuated wheels drives down stairs blindly. The robot has no information about the change in contact states, but because of the torque control approach through the whole body controller, we can react to it. The robot can even react to these bumps blindly with 0.7 meters per second while keeping its torso level and adapting only its legs. With this whole body control, we can even add arbitrarily other limbs to the robot as shown here, where we extended the robot with an arm, where the task is, is to keep the arms and the factor fixed with respect to the world frame or some base frame as shown here. But if you want to overcome challenging obstacles as shown here, we need to expertly plan the robot's future actions while consider its multimodal skills. So how can we achieve this? To answer this question, let's see how a squirrel is mastering jumps. 
We can see how it investigates the starting and goal branch. With this information, it can pre-compute and predict its future motions before execution. During execution, it can correct its initial movement over a shorter horizon towards the goal. And even though the branch, as you will see now, bends quite a bit, the squirrel can react and successfully finish the motion. Inspired by the squirrel synchronization of fast interactions and look ahead planning, our robot can achieve agile motions over this wooden box. To this end, we developed an optimization based framework that first transforms high level tasks offline into complex motions over a longer time horizon. And then during the execution, an online motion planner optimizes along the offline trajectories while considering a shorter time horizon. Finally, at each control cycles, we compute torque commands for inverse dynamics that are fed to the robot. Let's put these three blocks together and see how they interact. First, the offline motion planner generates an offline trajectory, which is fed into the, fed into the online motion planner that continuously optimizes a trajectory with a shorter horizon that is fed into the inverse dynamics. The last module sends torque commands to the robot. And with these three modules, we can generate dynamic motions over obstacles as shown here. The remaining part of this presentation focuses on the motion planning aspect, considering the robot's future trajectory, since it remains an open research program. Let me first discuss the online motion planning stage, here highlighted in red. Here we consider a shorter look ahead to plan reactive behavior and explore task simplifications due to the real-time requirements on the robot. The online motion planner robustifies motions to a certain degree by recomputing solutions on the fly and adding feedback control. This visualization, for example, shows the robot's future torso and wheel trajectories over a one second time horizon. In our work, we compare two motion planning concepts, a decomposed task and single task planner. The former breaks down the high dimensional planning problem into lower dimensional wheel and torso subtasks, which make the individual problem more tractable than a single optimization and can be solved at a faster update rate compared to single task approaches. The wheel trajectories are computed in a QP where we minimize a quadratic cost function subjected to linear constraints. Meanwhile, the torso optimization becomes a nonlinear optimization problem. With this approach, the update rate are in the order of hundreds of seconds. The coordination of each task solutions, however, is one of the main challenges, and heuristics are needed to align the wheel and torso motions, which presents us, prevents us from tracking complex offline trajectories, and therefore to evaluate our decomposed planner, we merely follow velocity commands from an operator. So let's have a look, closer look where these heuristics come into play when generating the torso and wheel trajectories as shown here. A common method in legged locomotion designs foothold positions based on the inverted pendulum model, where P leg is a reference foothold position that is split into feed forward reference signal P ref and a feedback term that is based on the velocity error of the torso VB, together with the feedback gain K, the robot's height H, and the gravitational acceleration G. Given the hybrid wheel trajectories, we sample the future support polygons of the wheels, which are here the green triangles. Here, the center of mass motion is approximated by the gravito inertia branch F and M, which acts as a substitute for the contact forces. With this branch and terrain normal N, we can compute the zero moment point constraint, which is considered to lie inside the support polygon. To summarize, the wheel trajectories and torso motions are co connected through these two motion templates. And as we will see in a bit, the wheel trajectories can diverge from the torso trajectory and it is quite difficult to handcraft, handcraft an inverted pendulum template for a wheel like a robot that captures hybrid locomotion. In contrast, a single task approach treats the continuous decision problem as a whole without breaking down the problem. Here, the challenge is to solve the problem in a reasonable time so that online execution on the real robot becomes feasible. To this end, we introduce an MPC for wheat legged robots. Since the single task approach optimizes over a larger number of variables, the update rate becomes 20 to 50 hertz. 
We will now present the model predictive controller that solves the coordination problem of the decomposed task approach by treating the hybrid locomotion problem as a whole without any heuristic. Herefore, we minimize the cost function that incorporates a final cost at capital T and an integral of the time varying running cost L, which is a function of the state vector X and control input vector U. The state vector X is the six dimensional pose and twist of the torso and also includes the joint positions. The control inputs are the contact forces and joint velocities. Since we are considering the robot's full kinematics, we can define the system's dynamics as a kinodynamic model, which is important as we'll see in the next slide. It defines a single rigid body dynamics with mass M inertia I, along with the kinematics for each leg QJ. At each iteration of the MPC, we update the MPC's initial state with the robot's measured state. We can add the quality constraints where we can say that swinging legs have zero contact forces and grounded legs can only generate velocities along the wheel's rolling direction. We will visualize this constraint in more detail on the next slide. The traversal of challenging terrain requires additional inequality constraints that respect safe terrain regions. To this end, we add half space constraints A and B of the end effector position PE that ensure grounded end effectors to stay inside the safe terrain. We can add friction cone inequality constraints of the contact forces lambda and collision avoidance with the environment of the end effector and torso. So let's have a closer look at the rolling constraint. As shown in this sketch, we model the robot's wheel as a moving point contact with a fixed joint position while optimizing the legs remaining kinematics and considering the size of the wheels. By expressing the wheel, the rolling constraint in a way that this red velocity is set to zero and also this blue velocity is sideways to the rolling direction, we can let the optimization explore motions along the green velocity vector without any heuristic. All of these three projections onto the three different directions and the end effectors contact position RE can be easily computed in the MPC through forward kinematics and does not require any simplification of the robot's rolling direction, which is actually needed in a decomposed approach. In the same way as we deal with traditional legged robots, we can add the friction cone constraint and any other constraint to this moving point contact. So quantif comparing receding horizon planners based on the real robot's performance is a non-trivial task. Our work provides a quantity that describes how well a receding horizon planner can predict the robot's future state. So let's say we have the future trajectory of the robot and to evaluate how good the trajectory's underlying model approximates the real robot, we compute the final state of the trajectory at the beginning and execute the planner over one horizon capital T. Now we can measure what the robot's actual state is. And by comparing the measured state and the predicted state, we can compute this prediction error, which is only valid if the commanded reference velocities were constant over this executed duration. We use this metric to compare the prediction accuracy of the decomposed and single task motion planner on the real robot. Moreover, we plot the prediction accuracy of, on the z-axis over linear and angular velocity commands. The goal for any planner is to achieve a low value. And as we can see here, the single task approach achieves a relatively constant prediction error over this range of velocities. A comparison with the decomposed approach on the right shows that the single task approach on the left can predict the robot's future trajectory more accurately. Especially at higher commanded velocities, the prediction error of the decomposed approach increases drastically, which is also the reason why this approach fails at higher speeds. Our single task approach solves the problem and improves the prediction accuracy by up to 71%, making fast locomotion feasible. With this single task MPC, we can accurately capture the robot's dynamics and rolling constraints, enabling us to execute novel hybrid motions. Here we show some fast acceleration where the single task approach finds some interesting solutions to quickly change its direction. Such motions are not feasible with the decomposed approach. In this video, the robot is still blind and has, has no prior knowledge of the obstacles. Nevertheless, the robot can smoothly adapt to stairs and steps. Moreover, we verified the approach over a high variety of obstacles 
and also gates where the robot executes hybrid or pure driving motions as shown here. In addition, we can also perform some dynamic jump with the front legs where the algorithm automatically, automatically commands the grounded legs to support the dynamic motion. One big improvement of the single task approach is that we can execute all motions and gates with a single set of parameters as shown here. So let me briefly summarize the takeaways from this study. Here we can see a side-by-side -side side by side, the use dynamic model, the number of optimization and the foothold heuristic. Obviously the update rate drops when optimizing all states in a single optimization, which is acceptable considering the robot's reactive behaviors performance shown in the video before. And we managed to have a higher maximum speed compared to the decomposed task approach. We achieved this by optimizing over more states in a single task and also by including the contact forces. Both optimization problems do not optimize over the step timings or sequences. In general, increasing the algorithm's complexity improves the difficulty of shown tasks. When we look at the achieved tasks, the last task is quite important for wheel legged robots and can only be achieved with the single task approach. The visualized motion below represents a fixed hybrid trotting gait which is not optimal from an energetic point of view because by only lifting the legs when needed and maximizing the time spent driving, we can lower the cost of transport. To this end, we showcase an approach that based on the velocity commands, adapts the online planner skate sequence. This can only be achieved in combination with the single task MPC since it uses a single set of parameters for all motions. We tested an online gate sequence generation in Wangen an der Aare, where the robot locomotes up a grassy hill and continues to move on paved roads. Being able to switch between pure driving and stepping can increase the locomotion's efficiency dramatically. This concept therefore quantifies kinematic lag utilities for online gate sequence generations of the MPC's timings without the need for predefined contact timings and lift off sequences. This automatic gate discovery enables our wheel legged robot with non zero wheels to coordinate aporotic behavior and reduce the cost of transport drastically. The execution of more challenging obstacles as shown here below requires the integration of the gate timings into the motion planning. In most cases, such a holistic approach optimizing over more optimization variables may not be feasible to run online on the robot. To achieve this, we run these motion planning algorithms offline before execution. Thus motion planning of these two steps requires more complex optimizations over a longer time horizons. Considering more realistic models and variables like step timings, this allows us to generate complex motions at the robot's limits. Such complex optimizations, however, suffer from longer optimization times and require our single task online planner to robustly execute these offline trajectories. Let's have a closer look into the offline planning stage. First, we use trajectory optimizations that minimize a nonlinear function f that is subjected to nonlinear equality and inequality constraints c and h. These algorithms transform high-level tasks like a goalpost given a height map into dynamically feasible motions, which are stored in a motion library. An operator can choose individual motions from this, from this library online, and each of these motions can be composed together, resulting in even longer maneuvers. In the following, we, in the following we discussed the interaction between offline and online planning. This visualization shows the robot before executing the motion. Given the desired start and goal position, including the terrain's height map, the trajectory optimization generates the offline trajectory. For readability reasons, we split the offline trajectory into the state vector XTO and control input vector UTO. The offline trajectory consists of the robot's torso pose and twist, and the legs, joint states, timings, when to lift off and touchdown, and contact forces. Now the robot executes the offline trajectory. 
One interesting conceptual question raised by our approach is the integration of the offline trajectory given by XTO and UTO into the MPC. We achieve this by feeding the offline trajectory as a quadratic cost term into the final and time varying cost. The MPC's optimized control policy, the red U, is applied to the robot at each iteration until an updated policy is available. With this framework, the robot executes the motion by optimizing online along the offline trajectory and being reactive to unforeseen events. With this combination of offline and online planning, we can generate highly complex and dynamic motions like turning motions with four rod per second, motions over the steps at 1.5 meters per second. We can compute motions together to, to achieve even longer motions. These motions are another unique example of how wheels can help to duck down under narrow objects without even stepping and by solely stretching out the robot's legs. Here's another pro example where the robot overcomes two steps. So let me continue by summarizing the contributions of this combined offline and online motion planning. The lower right visualization shows offline and online trajectories while executing terrain aware and highly agile motions. Due to the emphasis look ahead, our approach anticipates future events of the offline trajectory and robustifies them. Let's have a closer look at this turning motions. The vertical movement along the z-axis of the center of mass position experiences a discontinuity at t equals one second, where the robot switches from a repositioning motions to the blue offline trajectory. It can be seen how the MPC's red trajectory anticipates along its receding horizon, the upcoming blue offline trajectory and finds a solution respecting the whole body state. This plot represents only a fraction of all whole body states tracked through the MPC's cost function. As we can see in this example, the MPC's look ahead can blend between discontinuous offline motions while considering the future trajectory of 48 degrees of freedom. One of the main challenges of running offline trajectories is the online reaction to our unforeseen conditions. The key to this challenge is our online MPC that robustifies the maneuver to a certain degree by recomputing solutions on the fly and adding feedback control. With our approach, motion designers can choose their favorite trajectory optimization routine and iterate over behavior design offline without tuning robot experiments, enabling them to author new behaviors in a matter of minutes. And as shown here, compose multiple offline trajectories out of a motion library into a single maneuver. Throughout this work, we generated 99 different offline trajectories and more than 84% can be successfully run on the real robot. We can also perform complex locomotion strategies for robots with traditional legs. And here's another example how the online planner can react to slippage while anticipating the offline trajectory. Looking more closely from a side view at the trajectories of the center of mass and right legs over the locomotive distance X, we can see how the leg solid orange tra trajectory of the MPC finds a solution that guides the leg back to the dashed offline trajectory despite the slippage. And the robot successfully finishes the motion. For the offline computation of complex trajectories, we exemplarily use two trajectory optimizations. Our framework, however, can, can be ex combined with other algorithms providing whole body trajectories. In contrast to the online motion planning, the two trajectory optimizations do not allow for clear evaluation since each algorithm achieves maneuver for a different set of tasks. For example, the interactive trajectory optimization integrates a user-guided interface and the centroidal dynamics model, which considers the lag's inertias. On the other hand, the terrain approach focuses on motions over non-flat terrain with a simplified single rigid body dynamics model while adapting gate timings. Both trajectory optimizations rely on the online tracking approach of the MPC. All of these approaches solve the problem as a single task while simultaneously considering the torso and end effect of motion. The terrain aware approach does not consider the joint kinematics of the robot, but that allows for optimizing of gate, optimization of gate timings. On flat terrain, these approaches can execute any set of gate patterns. 
their interactive project optimization is in the current form um, not used for non-flat terrain, but in theory it could be extended. Since the terrain approach does not include the kinematics of the robot, it requires a heuristic to estimate the wheel's rolling direction. Now there's one problem with these offline trajectory optimizations. They struggle to optimize the gate sequences and timings since they're highly dependent on the initialization. Adding these optimization variables to the problem would require, for example, mixed integer programming, which is a hard problem to solve. One way to solve this is to use sampling-based planners for the offline part that simultaneously optimizes kinematic trajectories and step, step, step sequences, as shown here over stepping stones, and as we will see in the next example, again, over these double steps. So what we actually do here is having a sampling-based approach that finds different ways of ad adding the gate sequences and gate timings to the optimization program. In the following, we address the speed and efficiency aspect of weird-legged robots. Our weird-legged robot can achieve a higher speed than its traditional legged version, which is mostly limited to speed less than one meters per second, while our speed in theory is only limited to the wheel's maximum speed and radius. To compare the cost of transport of legged robots, gates here in blue and read legged robot, um, to address the energetic, sorry, to address the energetic efficiency of hybrid locomotion, um, we compute this dimensionless cost of transport, which is the mechanical power of the system divided by the mass M, gravitational acceleration G and speed V of the robot. If you compare now the cost of transport of legged robots gates here in blue and weed legged robots gates here in green, we can immediately see how these hybrid gates lower the cost of transport drastically. For example, pure driving reduces the cost of transport by 83% compared to traditional trotting gates. Here we see a time snippet of the cost of transport and the contact states when the robot adapts its gate sequences. If we look more closely at the contact states, we can see that the robot executes pure driving motions in these blue areas. Since the robot has non stable wheels, the robot executes aparotic gates like a hybrid static gates in these green areas, lifting one leg at a time, and the hybrid trotting gates in the red areas. The cost of transport plot in the top reveals that with our online gate adaptation, we can automatically switch between aparotic gates and pure driving motions, reducing the cost of transport by up to 85%. Adding wheels to legs does not just increase the speed and efficiency on flat terrain, which is probably intuitive for everyone here. But this multimodal robot achieves even fast motions of up to 1.5 meters per second over challenging obstacles. We also validated the decomposed motion planner and an early version of our roller walking robot during a real world competition. At the DARPA Subterranean Challenge, the robot rapidly mapped, navigated, and explored dynamic underground environments. Here, it can be seen how the robot generates an elevation map and incorporates object detection, SLAM, and navigation algorithms. At the tunnel circuit in Pittsburgh, we, the wheeled version of Animal achieved more than double the legged robot speed, and the robot scored important points for the Cerberus team. As you can see here, the terrain was a challenging muddy terrain, and the decomposed motion planner had difficulties traverse, to traverse the terrain. The lessons learned from this competition paved the way towards our more robust single task planners. With this image from Wangenander Ara, I would like to con conclude this presentation. Throughout this presentation, throughout this work, we developed a novel multimodal platform, achieving fast, efficient, and versatile locomotion. We explored two different online planning algorithms that generate fast solutions over relatively short horizons. And due to these fast update rates, we can add feedback control that robustifies the motions. Throughout the DARPA competition, we integrated higher level autonomy to the robot like SLAM, local and global navigation routines, and subterranean exploration methods. Finally, the combination of offline and online planning achieves complex motions over obstacles and at the robot's limits. So let's have a closer look at the future directions of this project. For the last mile delivery problem in urban, 
environments, we foresee that wheat-legged robots must shift the share from human-piloted and fuel-powered vehicles to electric small-scale autonomous solutions. We also envision transporting tools and materials in industrial and construction sites. Optimizing the morpho morphology of a wheat-legged robot is a fascinating avenue for future work. In this work, we, mer we merely added the wheels to animals' feet, but this doesn't allow for pure driving motions while turning, which would be essential for higher speeds. Adding a steering mechanism to the wheel improves the robot's mobility, but comes with additional hardware complexity. With a novel leg design that is inspired by hexapedal robots, the robot can control its orientation or position on the ground without adding hardware components. For this purpose, we merely have to reorient the leg's first actuator. Increasing the robot's payload capabilities could open further markets in many industries. In theory, we want actuators with high speed and torque, but in practice, a trade-off needs to be found for electrical motors. Such a trade-off is not required for wheat-legged robots since their speed comes through the wheels and allows for actuators in the legs with a higher torque and lower speed requirement. To make the system applicable for the last mile delivery, we need to further research and improve its autonomy, where we target navigation in urban environments with moving obstacles like humans, cars, and other vehicles, thus requiring collision-free planning. But if we look more closely at this particular scenario, it is a difficult problem to understand and plan a path in such dynamic urban environments. Thus, the, the understanding of the 3D scene becomes crucial and requires the identification of traversable terrain and navigation goals. Based on this 3D scene, we need to plan a safe navigation path to the target lo um, location, considering the robot's unique mobility skills and available maps of the environment. One might imagine a day when our robot is required to autonomously navigate from the old town of Zurich to the main station or university, incorporating all of these aspects. With this, I come to the end of my pre presentation. I would like also to thank my collaborators and my advisors, Professor Marco Hutter, and my two co-examiners, co Professor Stelian Koros from ETH Zurich and Professor Sambay Kim from MIT. I benefited from the great environment at DJ Zurich and the talented contributors at the Robotics Systems Lab that I would like to show here. I also would like to thank the DARPA team for the opportunity to learn more about real-world applications. Although it was mostly hard work, from time to time we managed to have some relaxing team-building moments, as shown here at Lake Tahoe. Now, the dancing motions of the unmuted video on the next slide um, was also created with our offline and online motion planning approach. And then at the end of the video, we show some new developments recently that we um, managed with reinforcement learning algorithms. Thank you for listening. So I'm happy to answer now all the questions here. It's just some references that I use throughout this presentation. Thank you very much, Marco, for the great talk. Uh, are there any questions from the audience? If so, please unmute yourself. Marco, he's uh, he's Julia. 
Um, I have a quick question to this combination of offline and online uh, planning. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about the time scales? I think you might have had them in, in one of the table, but specifically the, the offline planning. Uh, yeah. How much time do you need to, to plan in advance when you combine it with, with online planning? Yeah. And, and what is the, the basis for your planning? Uh, like this terrain knowledge, where does it come from? Yeah, so um, the first question here can be maybe answered with this slide. So you see this interactive TO, which is the interactive traject optimization or this terrain aware traject optimization. Um, the optimization times really highly depend on the task that we have to fulfill. But if we, for example, for this double step going up or going up a step and going down, we need, for example, to optimize such emotions up to like 30, 40 seconds. And the time horizon also varies really depending on the task, but um, we, were, we had time horizons of up to seven seconds. For going up the two steps, I think the time horizon was about three seconds. And for the second question that you asked, um, we the representation of the terrain can be explained best in this slide. So what we actually have here for the terrain is this height map. And the height map is actually just a 2.5D representation of the terrain. So you can imagine we have these kind of grid cells for each position in, in the world frame that gives us a height. And we use this in the trajectory optimization. Oh, thanks. Maybe a related question I just see in the chat uh, from MP. Uh, he asks, uh, in research, it seems that online planners are becoming much more complex, non-linear, and therefore slower. Um, rather than a fast, and it says more than 400 hertz, simple model-based planner that guarantees balance while driving, MPCs now are considering full kinematics or collision avoidance, etc. This is apparently fine in a lab setting, although do you think these methods are robust enough for real industrial settings? How easy is to justify such low uh, rates? So uh, actually, I'm already on one of the great slides to answer this. So our online MPC runs at a at a uh, like a twenty to fifty hertz, and we found in our lab settings and also in all the competitions that we are facing that this is a lower bound to what is actually feasible to run on the real robot and with um, feedback control. So everything that is in this time scale can be run on the robot successfully. And actually our online MPC, let me change the slides for that um, here. As you can see in our MPC, we almost include all the properties from collision avoidance, friction cone, convex terrain segments. It uses the full kinematics and a single rigid body dynamics. Recently, some of my colleagues also were running this um, with a full rigid body dynamics, which means you also include then the inertias of each of the links of the, of the legs. So there we are actually the only limitations that we are having with such an approach is that we can only generate trajectories over like one to one or two seconds horizons. And everything that considers a longer time horizon then needs to be computed offline. But for the daily operation in our labs, this is feasible to run. And I, and I foresee that, um, um, that there are many more ways to improve and to make the optimization problem even faster. A colleague of mine um, replaced now our solver that we use for this MPC, which is until now a, a DDP-based optimization with an S SLQ algorithm um, and replaced it with uh, multiple shooting algorithms where the same optimization problems was able to be uh, paralyzed. And we achieved then update rates of the same complexity of up to 100 to 200 hertz. So I think there are always ways to improve. 
Never, nevertheless, I think this offline planning will always become important even in the future if we have more compute because then we really would like to tackle even larger problems of considering climbing a wall where we could have to consider more and more constraints. And I think um, with every improvement that we make, we will be able to accomplish more tasks than in the end. Great. Um, are there any other questions from the audience? I actually have one. So in, in your bio, you said uh, you are a future entrepreneur. You want to talk <laughs> about a bit about more, more about that. I saw you last mile delivery problems in the motivation. You're developing these robots, I guess. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to stay also in the lab and I was, I will try to pursue to um, make something more concrete out of this idea. So for that, we would like to now go a little bit more and more into applications and um, try to apply this robot together with customers to see what are the needs and where such a platform could be useful. Um, on the same time, our lab is working on new robots with higher payload that could would be also perfect for such kind of applications. Yeah, that's, that's a very cool problem where, for instance, you could also use uh, current transportation systems where you can put robots in there yeah. and walk to the last, last mile. It's, it's a very cool problem. Yeah. Yes, that's why I'm also excited about this whole navigation problem since also we could see in the last two or three years, especially also with the development of reinforcement learning algorithms that make these robots really robust, we can see that more and more um, the basic locomotion concept over stairs, steps, and flat terrain is going to be kind of solved. But the next problem is really for such robot, how can it navigate in cluttered environments, in an urban environment, consider moving obstacles, and also to understand which, where the terrain is traversable and where not. So I think these are really open questions in our fields that really needs to need to be solved. Very interesting. Um, I don't see other questions popping up, so I think uh, we can we can close. I thank you very much for your talk. Uh, I think you left your co your contact information in case somebody wants to reach out. Um, yeah. And uh, good luck for your future endeavors and uh, thank you very much for the talk yeah thank you for inviting me see you bye bye see you see you all next week